I know you work with a lot of agents and, and, and especially on the, the lead gen demand side of things, but where do you see kind of with you diving in with, with a, a lot of agents, all different stages, all different calibers, like where, where are you seeing the thing that's kind of standing out that, that they're missing or not paying attention to? Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that I've been noticing a lot is new agents, that section or that category, or let's say anybody, they might not be new, but anybody that does like five and less deals or 10 and less deals a month or a year, sorry, a month would be great, Uh, (laughs) but a year, you know, that category of agent, they're really um, thinking that the people that are closing a bunch of deals have secrets, right? And that they need to be able to pay for those secrets or have those um, just be able to pay for it. Right. And so it's like, no, there's a lot of work that goes into that stuff. You can't just pay for it as far as that shiny object syndrome goes. Right. So when people are like trying to buy leads or they're trying to buy this system or they're trying to buy that system, or they're saying, well, this system is better than this or Ryan, you know, why is this system? Why is you, why is your system better than this system? Things like that. And it's like, well, they're all pretty dang good. Right. Most of the lead generation systems out there, they'll get you some leads, but it's that follow-up sequence and it's that the work, right. The work of being a professional. Uh, and so a lot of them are missing that part. And then I think a lot of the more experienced agents that I work with, they forgot that part that that's what got them. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. And when, when things shift a little bit and they start and they're like, Whoa, wait a minute. My team is not generating all these leads and they're not doing all this stuff. They just forgot that there's a lot of work to being a professional. You got to know your market. You got to know your area. You got to open your mouth and point it at people. And whether that's belly to belly or this way, right? Talking back and forth, doing interviews, getting on YouTube and all the different social media platforms and really just explaining the things that are going on in the market to your audience um, in that authentic way. And I know authentic, I don't know, sometimes it gives me cringes when people say that, but... That's my problem. I'm a terrible salesperson. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, don't say those words. <laughs> but uh, no, really, you know, you want to be authentic, right? And you, you want to deliver that value and deliver what's really happening in the market, right? Yeah. And what do you mean by authentic? Build like, that. What, what is what is your what is your take on on uh, being authentic? So being authentic is you know, I get this from my grandma, right? My favorite thing that she parted her wisdom and knowledge to me was never do anything or say anything that you wouldn't want published on the front page of the newspaper right so to me i take that as you see me here like this you're gonna see me in my bedroom you're gonna see me out in the grocery store and you're gonna see me you know driving my truck and i'm gonna be that same exact person why because i never want anybody to have anything over on me or Mm -hmm. never feel that i didn't treat them this, you know, how I really am. Right. Right. And so that's what I mean by being authentic is be that same person in public, be that same person in private and just, you gotta be yourself. Right. And so many people get in that real estate industry or the the industry and think that they have to be an actor, right? You Mm. gotta fake it till you make it. Well, not really. You can get out there and you can know your market stats and you can know every cell and you can visit the homes and you can be that expert, right? In your market. And you're going to be ahead of 99%. (laughs) I promise. right? Right. And so that's being, that's whether you're a new person or an old person. And if you don't know something, that's one of my, one of the things that you got to tell people. I don't know, but guess what? I know where to find it out and I'll look it up for you. You don't have to be an expert on everything, right? Like somebody comes to me and says, hey, Ryan, how do you do gain an Instagram following and get bigger Instagram? I'm going to say, I have no clue. That is not (laughs) what I do. (laughs) They're like, but you're an internet guy. I know. I can figure it out. I can tell you what to do. But guess what? I do. Here's what I did. I did paid ads. I did not post on Instagram. I did not post on Facebook. I posted pictures of the custom knives I made because I liked it for fun. And people would say, hey, can I buy one? And I say, no, <laughs> <laughs> they're my babies. Right. So that was my social media experience. Right. So don't, right. You know, am I doing it now? Yes. Uh, because I hired somebody <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> to take my content and start doing it for me. Yeah. So 
don't ask me things like that. Or if I don't know, I'm going to tell you, you know, yeah. but running real estate deals, it was hundred percent Google. I would spend a couple thousand bucks a month, get a bunch of Google leads. I'd send them videos. I send them texts and I follow up and I teach them about the market and why it's important to buy a home. And that's how I grew my business. Right. Yeah. So that's what I teach people. So that's authenticity. I think. Yeah. So, so unpack that a little bit for us, kind of where you focus, kind of where it starts and where a lot of people miss, right. Mm -hmm. No matter what we're doing, we're still trying to, to get to a conversation. When does a, when does an opportunity really become a real opportunity and like what you're talking about in the follow-up, but, but how from getting them to consume content in the yep. follow-up, how, how that, how that works and, yeah, and, and understanding. And, and you made, you know, you made a great point at KT. You were like, when's the last time you got a phone call from Frank Kern? When's the last time you got a phone call from, from Russell Brunson kind yeah. of, kind of unpack and, and share that. So people can kind of get their heads around exactly what we're, what we're talking about. Yeah. Well, uh, so many people get stuck in, if I generate a lead online, that is a sales qualified lead, right? Well, Market qual email yeah, right? Market that's what they think. Lead. Right. Yeah. Right. That's what they think, right? They think those should be sales qualified. They ready, willing, able to close and pre-approved, get them in the car and go, right? That's what they're imagining, I think. And so that's a misconception, right? They're more of a market qualified lead, right? They've raised their hand and said, Hey, I'm thinking about dipping my toe in this market. I would like some information and I don't want to be harassed quite yet. <laughs> right. Because if I did, I'd call Zillow or you know, whatever that is. Right. Yeah. And so that's kind of, and we're never going to trick anybody into buying a house, right? Like, ah, we got gotcha. you. Come buy a house because it's a big purchase and you got to, it takes a lot to do that. So what we got to do is get them from market qualified to that sales qualified lead. Right. And doing that takes education, takes time takes commitment on both parties, right? And so the best way that we found to do it is really education. Oh my gosh, who would have thought of that? The same thing that you're gonna do if you get a referral from your mom or your cousin and it's your whatever, third or fourth cousin that you may or may not have ever met, you're gonna talk to them. You're gonna reach out, you're gonna see where they are and you're gonna be compassionate, right? Mm -hmm. And you're gonna care. And then you're gonna help them get whatever they want. Right. So yeah. that's kind of how I picture it is whenever I got a lead, I would treat him like my uncle and just be like, sometimes he was an asshole. Sometimes he was funny. Sometimes he was this, right. But it was always, I knew they loved me and I loved them. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so it's like, oh, you just got to work through that stuff. Right. And so if I'm sending them emails, if I'm sending them videos or texts or voicemails even, or calling them, right. I'm imagining when I'm doing that, that they're going like this every time we talk, right? So they're just listening and nodding their head until they're ready, right? Then they're going to be like, oh, so like what you're doing right now, right? You're listening to me. You're nodding your head. You're going, yep, that's right, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Until something that you're like, oh, I can add in here. I should punch that. Then you're going to say something. Same thing with lead generation uh, in any form, right? So that's what we need to do. We're giving them, we're advertising them something, right? They took something, they gave us their name and email and phone number for something, right? Something of value or not value. And most of the time it's a homes list. Great. Who cares? Uh, but that what triggers people, right? So they're willing to, we know they're willing to give us their information for that, right? Then we need to help them consume the market, right? So now, what does that mean? Well, it's like, how many homes are there available on the market? Is it still so competitive and crazy? How much down payment do you need? So then you can do all that kind of stuff through additional retargeting ads. You can do it through videos. You can do it through email. One video a week with highly targeted keywords. That's going to be what the algorithm wants to see. That's what Google wants to see. They want to see consistency. They want to see that you're putting your message out there in a format that's easily digestible and searchable and is relevant. 